Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and in today's episode we are checking out the new Albatross. Uh, this is a pretty awesome little aircraft and uh, we're going to see just what it's all about in Microsoft. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Okay, as always guys, you know that Asobo products, the graphics are always fantastic, so I'm not too worried about textures. We're going to get right into the checklist. Now, as you guys know... I don't rehearse my videos. I, I don't I don't pre-test things. I don't. I give everything to you raw. This is my first time, so it's going to be your first time, so we're going to do this together. All right, so rocking through the checklist here. Flight, flight controls, yep, absolutely. Of course, they're free and correct. We know they are, right? Jim down the street told us they were good. So battery, let's figure out where the battery is. All right, battery switch goes to the on position item ticked. Fuel shutoff lever. I actually think I remember, where, yep, I do, where that is. Now, it's, don't let this fool you. It says forward and guarded. This guard doesn't move. That is the guarded position, okay? So that way you can't bring your hand down from the throttle and accidentally kill the fuel to the engine. All right, you can see that it's got two little rivets right there, okay? It doesn't move, so I don't want that you guys like spent on like what am I supposed to do anyway like someone else might have done um let's see here pedo heaters i don't know where the pedo heaters are. oh pedo heaters <laughs> i do know where the pedo heaters are all right they are in the off position throttle check yep it's there <laughs> right. taxi landing lights if i remember correctly the landing lights are in a goofy position yes they're right here so you got a center position which is off and then uh taxi and landing so it's gonna be a little weird manipulating that switch but we'll see what that's like later on landing gear handle there it is right there staring right at us so boom there we go altimeter setting we're just gonna hit b on our keyboard now the altimeter should be right up on the forward can or console there it is right there so we're just gonna tap b set our barometric pressure boom parking brake where's the parking brake oh that's actually kind of a neat position for it i actually kind of like that so parking brake is set. Main brake pressure indicator should be at zero. Yep, there it is right there. Call that zero. And there's our standby looking at about 60 pounds of pressure. Tick item. And let's see here, anti-ice. Uh, there we go right there. Anti-ice is off. Navigation lights as required. Let's go ahead and flip them on there. Boom. And that is it. Before starting engine. So this should be, let's see here, engine minimum oil pressure light should be illuminated. Don't start light should be illuminated. And inverter 36 volts fail light should be in, uh, illuminated. So let's check one of these. Where's our bit panel? There it is. All right. There's the minimum oil pressure, inverter 36 volts. And I don't see the don't start light. Hmm. Well, whatever. All right. So that's what we got. Tick, tick, and tick. I don't see a don't start light. I really don't. JPT, JPT, turbine starter, emergency fuel, fuel filter, de-icing, air condition, air condition, stall. Huh. Yeah, I don't see a don't start light. Um, well, let's come up here. Maybe I'm missing something. Ah! Probably the one that right here that says don't start. Okay. So, oh, no, we won't take that. Engine systems. Do, what do we got? Boom. Engine systems. Now on. Okay. Uh, now we're still looking at other things here. We got a uh, light there. Now light over there. Fuel on board has been checked, but uh, let's double check that. So let's see here. Fuel. Do, 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 do. Let's see how much we're going with. And let's bring some more fuel on board. I have no idea how much fuel this thing burns. Tick item. All right. And let's see here. Throttle. Full backward it is. Amp meter. Voltometer. There we go. 20. Let's see. Here. Looks like we're looking at 25 volts at zero amps. All right, well, that's interesting. I'm not sure if the zero amps is normal, but let's keep going. Turbine starter, where are you? Where's the turbine starter? Press for two seconds. Then turbine starter light should come on. I saw that over there. Uh, I think that's up here. Yep, right there. So on for two seconds, and that should come on, and then the throttle should go to the idle position. Engine starter, press for two seconds. So I want to see where both of these are. All right, that's engine starter, and that's the turbine starter. So let's go, boom, give it a tap. One, two. I 
I feel like that light should be illuminating better than that, but... There it is. There we go. Alright, and then start switch. One, two. And it said throttle to the idle position. That's idle. Engine RPM is here. Tick. Where's our RPM gauge? Do 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 do. Where? I feel like it should be right in front of my face here. This guy it looks like. Let me double check. That's it. Yep, indeed. Oil pressure. I don't read Russian. Exhaust temperature. That's our exhaust temperature. Okay. Climbing. Hydraulic sysfail light. I thought I saw that actually. You know what I should do? While we're waiting for the engine to power up here. Let's make one of those uh, snazzy views. Whoa. Interesting. Oh, I know why. It's because I'm looking at something. Untick that. There we go. Oh, no. Alright, we're going to go boom, tick, tick, and after starting engine, main generator is now on, generator light turns off, I did see that, that was up on the bit panel, emergency generator on, I don't know where that one is, this here, Ah, let's just verify it, yep, alright, I figured, but couldn't really tell, pretty simple start, isn't it? Main circuit panel switch. All switches on. All switches on. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, look at that. It comes to life. Boom. All right. Tick item. All avionics. Where's all of our avionics? Yep. All avionics are on. Looking good. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 I'm looking for a transponder. Oh, the do, da, day. There's our transponder. There's the transponder. Uh, transponder and let's see here we're on the sure altitude a little early for that but that's all right we'll leave it as is adi attitude director indicators checked tick rmi what's an rmi oh uh, i think that's for like the uh adf glide slope or ils glide slope interesting rmi i can't ever remember what the r stands for anti-i should be set to automatic First position, that's auto, and then forward is on. Boom, and we're ready for taxi. Oil temperature checked, amp meter checked, speed brakes checked. Ooh, we gotta check some speed brakes. Now, can I pull it all the way back? I'm scared to put it back. I don't want to go and stop. Looks like we're good. Okay. You know, I got myself set up. I was ready to make the camera view, but you think that I saved it? I think that'd be good, right? Don't you guys? That's a pretty good view. All right, control, alt, and one to save it. There we go. All right, now I can get back to that pretty easily. Okay, the other thing we're gonna test out today is track IR. We're gonna hope that it's working, guys. We're gonna hope, we're gonna hope with everything that we have that's working. So give me a second, I'm gonna get that up and running, and then we will get airborne. All right, my friends, so things seem to be working. Rudders are responding. Track IR is working. Parking brake is released, I think. It is indeed. You know what, let's use our shift Z stats here. Two, five, nine. Darn it. So we got a taxi all the way down. So we're going all the way down to two, nine, or eight.
It's all right. Taxi's very nice. Power response is fantastic. Ooh, baby, you're going to catch it in the eye here. Taxi's very nice, actually. Nose wheel's very responsive. One of the better ones that I've seen yet. I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving, by the way. Let me get adjusted here as I just smashed my head against the canopy. That was fantastic. We uh, celebrated Thanksgiving with the big family last weekend, and then we just did something with us here at home. But uh, I hope you all got fat and happy. And uh, hope nobody was left alone on Thanksgiving. That's always one of my big things. Thanksgiving and Christmas, or whichever the December holidays you choose to celebrate, I, I hope no one's ever alone during those. Now, if I remember correctly, isn't this smoke? Maybe not? Doesn't look like it. I thought it had smoke pods on it. Now, if I remember, this is also used for air racing is the whole purpose why this is in here so be interesting to see what we got what do we got de-icing is on that Garmin display actually looks really nice right there we got a lot of things coming up this week guys for for videos we have obviously multiple aircraft to try out I definitely want to give the p51 Mustang a shot see what it's like um, I'm going to go into DCS World first and fly the P-51 there. And the reason why I do that is DCS World, again, guys, has a really awesome flight model. A lot of their flight models are really, really nice. Um, so I'm just kind of curious what the comparison is. You know, not not a judgment. You know, it's really not. Um, I know that they're very much so two very, very different beasts. But the thing I like about DCS World when I get the chance to compare them is, again, DCS uh, really puts a lot of... Uh, emphasis on the flight models you know so it just it makes it it makes it uh, a really nice comparison Oop. and I'm drifting I always like to look around when I'm taxing but man for the life of me I can't ever keep my plane straight I don't know what that building is right there I don't recall if that's actually out there or not uh, well actually I'm sure it is this is that uh, um, Sim Bullfrog, is that what it is? Bullfrog Sim? Now I can't remember what his name is. Um, but uh, the third party add on for Tucson Airport. I was so happy when this came out. I hope he keeps working on it. I know there's a few other details that could that could be adjusted here, but really enjoy this. I'm really glad he did it. And for the most part, this cockpit looks really good. A couple little covers and switches and knobs. Damn it. There I go again. <laughs> I just want to look around. <laughs> oh, man. I just want to look around. That's all. You know what we should probably do, actually, is review the before takeoff checks. The speed brakes are in. Flaps set for takeoff. Let's see. Do we see? Flaps must be in the takeoff position. That's flaps one. Fuel on board. Flight controls. Aileron trim. Trim must be set to neutral. Okay. Elevator trim. Two marks aft. Pedo heaters obviously get turned on. Landing and taxi lights. Oh, I should have the taxi light on. I didn't even think about that. Which one is the taxi light? That one. Uh oh. Ooh, I thought we were going to crash. Damn. It. I don't know what's pulling it so hard to the right, but something definitely is. I mean, I don't even have my feet on the pedals. And it's pulling to the right. It wants to wander, but that's all right. I should probably set a dead zone, honestly. I also probably didn't need to taxi all the way out. Let's go ahead and set our flaps. Now I don't see I don't see a trim indicator. 
We're going to have to go on the hunt for that in a minute. Let's turn those pedo heaters on. It's a clock. What is that? I don't see any kind of trim indicator. Unless that's it. That's aileron trim and we're getting close. Okay, so we're approaching the runway. I'm gonna hold short and then we're gonna find our elevator trim. Cause that's ailerons. Although I don't know if they're actually modeling. Alright, let's see if we can figure this out here. That definitely looks like... I know my trim is mapped. Which has me scared because I'm sort of all over the place now. I've been playing with the trim wheel for a while now, the whole time we were taxing almost. But I'm not seeing any of the gauges indicate. Let's try this. Uh, okay, there we go. So there's trim. Maybe it's not. Maybe my trim isn't bound. I'm starting to wonder now. Let's check those controllers real quick. Oh, you know what? No, it can't be because my joystick is disabled. So let's turn that uh, flight control surfaces, control trimming surfaces. That would be why. Wow. All right, so let's do it. Apply. I don't know if even my axis are bound. Now it's going. All right, let's get back in the plane here. Said two notches aft, right? So there's two notches to the aft. Um, I'm going to check those axes because I'm... Nope, they are not bound. Son of a gun. So I've recently been using, as you guys know, I've been using SPAD.next for quite a while. Um, so it really doesn't surprise me that they're not bound. So give me just a second here and we'll walk through that real quick. And let's see here. Da, 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 da. Access. Let's just, look. oh, not, there we go. Definitely not for camera. Nothing for camera. Close, close. Uh, primary flight controls, rudder access, elevator access. There we go. Start scanning. Boop. There we go. And aileron axis. Come on. And there is a reason we're not using SPAD right now. And I will be sharing that with you guys in the next video. But uh, we have some work to do inside the sim. Cool. All right. So I think we are good to go. Whoa, that was weird. My display tripped out. All right, guys, so I just had to restart. I'm gonna warn you, I've had quite a few crashed desktops with this aircraft. And the parking brake is set on the runway. Come on. All 
All right. So as far as how she flies, takeoff is very smooth. She's very slow in the controls, you know, so you're not going to be doing any real... I mean, that's, that's max roll here. But she recovers very nicely. And she flies very, very smooth. Very gentle bird. Definitely have a lot of fun with this aircraft. Assuming the crash to desktops get taken care of. Very stable. Um, now with that in mind, she requires quite a bit of trim. You're going to be trimming a lot. Which is actually pretty common with a lot of the Russian aircraft that I have flown. Um, between obviously here and DCS. In DCS, a lot of the aircraft, Russian... Uh, MIGs and whatnot uh, require a lot of trim. You're, you're constantly trimming. Um, but she flies great. It's very, very smooth. Very, very gentle is what it feels like. Best way to describe a gentle, a gentle jet. I'll try bringing her up over the top here. Nice and easy. This would be a very fun aircraft to do um, formation flying with. You know, some formation uh, aerobatics and whatnot, acrobatics. Um, because it's so stable it's again it's very very stable you guys can see it on the camera it's not bouncing around a lot she's not flying all over the place um now getting into is that realistic is the next question right um i don't feel like the wind and environmental effects are impacting the aircraft as much as i would think but I mean, I haven't seen any indication of turbulence, and quite frankly, in T Tucson, there's almost always turbulence. You know, we're in a bowl, you know, <laughs> and the thermals change so quickly here. I mean, you know, it'll be 60 degrees at six o'clock, and by nine o'clock, you're you know, 80, 90 degrees plus, depending on the day. Um, but this is definitely. This would be a fun one to go cruise around with. Now, it's got an air racer skin on it, and I just have a hard time believing that just because of how, again, how sluggish she is in the controls. I mean, let's just see what we got here. There's that. Rolling opposite. This max. We're going from uh, full right, full left. So, I mean, she just doesn't seem to have that, uh, that roll rate that I would expect to see from an air racer but definitely a lot of fun to fly again I enjoyed the checklist the startup process is fun in it very simple but fun the addition with the Garmin is very nice let's go ahead and try to bring her in we're gonna test those speed brakes speed brakes are now deployed we should be able to see that ah. yep there they are right underneath there I should probably get my butt back in the camera or in the cockpit. Talking those speed brakes off. Let's set back to flaps one here. Or take off flaps, if you will. And we might be. I'm guessing we're too fast for takeoff flaps because you can see there that the flaps are not retracting or uh, extending. So I'm guessing there's an airspeed restriction, which wouldn't surprise me, but I mean we're approaching stall speed, so I feel like they should be coming out here. There we go, now we're in takeoff flaps. Where's my runway? I got myself all torn up here. Oh wow, we are right next to the runway. Gear coming down. We're gonna try a really goofy approach here, guys. This could be uh, this could end very badly here. I'm gonna start trimming like crazy, pulling that trim 
nose up, adding power back in. We're going to cut this one in here pretty pretty tight here. There's full flaps. Adding a lot of power because I'm turning so steep. All right, cutting that power back out. Oof, come on. Got a bit of a crosswind going here. Little bounce. All in all, not too bad. Could have been worse. So this is a fun plane. I will absolutely say it's it's uh, definitely a fun plane. You know, you're you're not in the Hornet. You're not in the, you know the GBR three or anything like that. You know, uh, she's definitely like I said, uh, a bit slower in the turn. Um, a bit slower in the legs, regardless. Um, but uh, very smooth, very gentle flight, and, and I really enjoyed that. Um, I mean, you saw that wicked BS approach that I just pulled off there. And, uh, you know, obviously, you know, like I said, we had to add significant power on that turn. But, you know, that's because I was bleeding out like crazy. Landing gear down, full flaps extended, and trying to make a 40-degree bank turn. Yeah, you're going to need some power. So, um, but, uh, sh and at the same token, that airspeed increased very nicely, very smoothly. The throttle response was very, very nice. Um, it, this was an enjoyable flight. I truly enjoyed flying this. Um, and I will definitely be flying her again. Um, and I recommend you guys give her a shot too if you guys have it. Um, this is part of the air race pack um, But uh, definitely try it out. This was a fun little plane so Assuming the crash of desktops get resolved here pretty quick And uh, we, I mean we did that whole segment without any issues knock on wood, you know everything went well um, But uh, and that's why I did it so short, you know got up tested it see what the flight model was like and then got her back down So I could you know hopefully get the recording done before any issues um, but uh, I don't know if everyone's experiencing crash of desktops with this aircraft. Let me know down in the description below if you guys are having trouble with this uh, with this aircraft at all as well. I'd be interested to hear that. But uh, other than that, I hope that you guys aren't. Honestly, I hope that you guys are having a great time with this plane. And uh, let me know what you guys think of it as well. If you whether you're having good times or bad times, I want to hear. And until next time, guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.